All right, let's take a look at problem one from chapter nine. Uh, so the need arises in the laboratory for 2,000 centimeters cubed of antifreeze solution consisting of 30 mole percent methanol in water. What volumes of pure methanol and of pure water at 25 degrees C must be mixed to form the 2,000 centimeter cubes of antifreeze also at 25 degrees C? All right, so everything's at 25 degrees C. Partial molar volumes for methanol and water in a 30 mole percent methanol solution and their pure species molar volumes both at 25 degrees C are as follows. All right, so we're given the um, partial molar volume of methanol and of water and then the pure component molar volume of water and methanol. Great. Okay, um, so let's go over to our sheet and I'm going to write down what we're what we know and then we'll we'll go from there right and so 30 mole percent methanol and so component one is, is going to be methanol so for problem one all right we're told that we need some final solution of x1 is equal to 0 0.3 and for that final solution V total is going to be equal to 2,000 centimeters cubed Okay. And then we're given partial molar volume of component 1, molar volume of component 1, partial molar volume of component 2, and molar volume of component 2. Okay, great. So then we're also given for component 1, we're given as partial molar volume. And so, again, when I think about partial molar volume, it's the effective molar volume or the effective space per mole occupied by a molecule of component 1 in that final mixture, right, in my mixture. Whereas my molar volume, right, is the volume or space per mole that a molecule of component one occupies in a pure component solution. All right, so this is the space per mole occupied in a pure component state. And then my partial molar volume is pure or volume occupied per mole in that final mixture. All right, so I often think of this as the effective value in solution. All right, and then I have the same thing for component two. Cool. All right, so now if I think about my final mixture, so I have a final mixture of composition V total. All right, so when I'm dealing with mixtures, all right, I know that V, the intensive molar volume of my final mixture, is going to be equal to X1 times V bar 1 plus X2 times V bar 2. Okay, cool. Where I know V bar 1, I know V bar 2, I know X1, I know X2. So that would allow me to calculate V. Okay. So the first thing we'll do is I'm going to first go ahead and I'm going to calculate V. Okay. Why am I going to calculate V? Well, we're given V total. Okay. And so since I'm given V total too, right, I know that V total is going to be equal to N times V. So therefore, I can solve for N the number of moles is being V total divided by V. Okay. Cool. And once I know the total number of moles, N, okay, well then N1, okay, the moles of component 1, is just going to be equal to X1 times N. Right? And in case this isn't clear, remember that X1 is going to be equal to N1 divided by N. Right? And so that's how I can get to N1 is equal to X1 times N. And then likewise, N2 is equal to x2 times n, where just to be clear, right, since I have x2s in here, remember that x1 plus x2 is equal to 1, so x2 is equal to 1 minus x1. All right, so I can, I first calculate the molar volume of my final mixture because I know the composition of my final mixture and the partial molar properties. And when I'm calculating the molar volume of my mixture, I use the partial molar properties because I need to know the effective molar volume, right? The effective for the actual space occupied per mole of component one and two in that final mixture to calculate the final molar volume. And then once I have my molar volume of my mixture and I know the desired um, total volume, extensive volume, I can use that to calculate N, the number of moles of component one and component two. 
okay, or total number of moles, and then I'm going to get break that down to component yeah number of moles of component one and component two. Right, cool. So then once I have the moles of component one and two, right, the key is when I have a mixture. If I take a beaker of pure component one and a beaker of pure component two, and I mix them, volume isn't conserved. Right, so the final volume isn't equal to the total volume of beaker one plus the total volume of beaker two. Right, so volume's not conserved. Okay, and so just to write that down, remember that you know v total right isn't equal to v total one plus v total two. Okay, this isn't the case. And what I mean by that is that if I have right some beaker containing one and two, right, that results from mixing some beaker of pure one and some beaker of pure component two, right, the total volumes aren't additive, okay? But what is additive, right, is the number of moles or mass, right? Moles, assuming there's no chemical reaction. So while total volumes are not additive, okay, the total number of moles in that final mixture, right, is equal to the number of moles of component one plus the number of moles, moles of component two that I'm mixing, right? So moles and mass are conserved, volume is not. Okay. So the idea is, is now that I've calculated the moles of component one and component two in my final mixture, all right, that gives me then the moles of component one and component two that I must mix to form that final solution, right? And so what we're getting at right, is get the idea or the, the big point with mixtures is total volume is not additive. So if I have one liter of water and one liter of methanol and I mix them, I'm not going to get two liters of a final solution. But if I have one mole of water and one mole of methanol and I mix them, I will have two moles of my final solution. Okay. So now that I have the moles in my final solution, I have the moles of component one and component two that I must have mixed together. Okay, so then if I want to find right, the total number of moles of component one that I must have had in my beaker that I'm going to mix with the beaker of pure component two, okay, that's going to be equal to the number of moles of component one that I had, right? because I just calculated that because I know it's in my final mixture, times V1. And the total number of moles of component two is likewise going to be N2 times V2. Okay. So to answer my problem then, right, what volumes of pure methanol and pure water need to be mixed, right, this is going to be it. So we'll jump over to MATLAB, we'll we'll compute it, right, and the key is once we calculate V1 total and V2 total, right, we'll find that V1 total plus V total, V2 total, total is not equal to V total, all right, the volumes are additive, Right, so the key is when I'm mixing, volume's not additive, okay, or volume's not conserved, uh, but moles and mass are. So I'm going to jump over to MATLAB now so we can get doo -doo -doo, a numerical value. So I'm going to create a script. Okay, I'm going to call this problem one. And here I'm using MATLAB as compared to MATLAB online just because I was having some issues when I was recording screencasts with my equal button. Okay, so this is chapter nine, problem one. And what do I need to do, right? So, so first I'm gonna get um, provided properties. So, so first I'm gonna get molar volumes, and so V1. So V1 is 38.63, oh, V1 is 40.727. Okay. And, you know, so actually looking at this, the molar volume, right, is greater than the partial molar volume. So what this tells me is in pure component methanol, all right, so if I have pure methanol, right, and this seems to be true for pure water. In pure methanol and pure water, the space occupied per mole is larger than in the mixture. All right, so in pure component one and pure component two, so if I'm just thinking about methanol, right, on average, a methanol molecule 
occupies more space in the pure component state than it does in the mixture. So in the mixture, right, and so when I think about space, there's the excluded volume, right, the space actually occupied by that methanol molecule plus an excluded volume around it, right, because molecules can only get so close. Okay. And so when I think about molar volume, it's that excluded volume plus that void space, right, per molecule or per mole, right, is what I'm thinking of. Now when I mix it with water, right, the excluded volume of methanol is going to be the same, right, but what it's going to change is that void space right around the molecule. And so the fact that the molar volume is decreasing, well that tells me that my molecules, right, on average are closer together, right, in my mixture than they are in that pure component state. So I have some attractive interactions, right, that's causing my methanol and water molecules to be closer, right, in that mixture than I would in that corresponding pure component state. Okay, pretty cool. All right, and so what I would expect then is that if I were to have a liter of water and a liter of methanol and I mix them, the final mixture is going to be less than two liters, right? The total volume of that mixture is going to be less than the sum of the two. All right, but let's let's jump over, right? And let's let's actually compute it and make sure that that is the the case. Okay. All right, so forty point. Oh. So 40.727 V2 is going to be equal to 18.068. Okay, and now I'm going to get my partial molar volumes. So I'll call it V1 bar is 38.632 V2 bar is 17.765 okay. then we're given the final total volume The total was 2,000, and we were given mole frac component 1, and that was x1 was equal to 0 0.3. Okay. Now our calculation. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is since we use x2, I'm just going to go ahead and calculate x2, and x2 is just 1 minus x1. Okay, got it. And then from our work, all right, the first thing we did is we went ahead and we calculated the molar volume of my mixture, since I know x1 and x2, and v bar 1 and v bar 2. And so v was equal to x1 times v bar 1 plus, oh, I call it v1 bar plus x2 times v2 bar, okay, and that's the molar volume of mixture. And then once I had V, I was able to calculate N, the total number of moles. And that was V total divided by V. Okay. And then once I had the total number of moles, I was able to get the moles of species 1, right? N1 was just equal to X1 times N. Now, to get um, N2, right, I could do X2 times N, or I could do N minus N1, right? It, both are exactly the same, okay? So you could do um, N minus N1, right, or X2 times N, right? would give you exactly the same thing. And I'm going to... So that's moles of 1, this is moles of 2. Okay. Cool. And then, so then to determine the volume of component 1 and component 2 that I needed to add, so V1 total would be equal to N1 times V1. Okay. And I'm not going to suppress this, so it gets printed. And V2 total was equal to N2 times V2. Okay. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to run it. Okay. 
Now, remember, we're, we're mixing to form 2000, right? And so, let's see. Does it, so this says that I need 1017.1, right? So scientific notation. But I have, so it's 1 times 10 to the 3. So 1017.1, and that would be centimeters cubed of methanol. I need 1,052.9 centimeters cubed of water. Okay. So cool, right? But I see that the total volume of component 1 and component 2, right, both are greater than 1,000. So I'm going to have, it's not additive, right? So the, if I mix, so again, if I mix 1 liter of water and 1 liter of methanol, right, I'm going to get less than 2 liters of my mixture. And it's my molar volume is less than my partial molar volumes. So the volume of my mixture is going to be less than right, the corresponding pure component state. Cool. All right, so hope that gives you some numbers. Hope that helps. Um, we'll see you in problem two.